Hi there, I just wanted to do a video review of um, the Vipassana retreat that I did a few months ago up here in Ontario uh, called Egbert, Ontario, which is pretty close to Toronto, just so people could get a, a general sense of what the experience entails uh, and what to expect and some of my feelings in terms of the pros and cons. Um, so overall, I think it was a good experience and a very challenging experience. And I think that um, you should go in there prepared to be able to work on yourself. It's not a, it's not a vacation. It's not um, something that's easy. You will probably have some breakdowns as, as I did, uh, mental breakdowns at times but um, something that I think that can be very rewarding and a unique experience. So what is Vipassana? Uh, Vipassana is a technique uh, that is taught from Buddhism. It was uh, taught from, from Buddha. Uh, having said that, they say that it's not necessarily um, limited to whatever religion that you're from, whether you're Hindu, uh, Christian, Catholic, you know, it's a, it's a technique that allows you to be able to um, free your mind uh, in terms of uh, releasing past memories, pains, um, accumulations, which is what we call a lot of it the ego and who we are. And, um, you know, through meditation and specific techniques with that as sort of a high level summary. So, um, you know, this was taught thousands and thousands of years ago by uh, the Buddha. And basically, you know, they believe that this is the original technique that uh, Buddhism had, uh, uh, you know, Buddha had taught. And uh, Buddha originally, Buddhism actually originally started in India. Having said that, it spread to Asia. Uh, China, Japan, um, Thailand, and with that it kind of became its own form of Buddhism and lost its original form that even within India, its original birthplace, um, Buddhism died down and its original form, these techniques that, that were taught were actually lost. And, and the reason why this form of Buddhism uh, and its techniques was actually retained was because uh, it was actually in Burma, you know, uh, retained in Burma and the founder of the Vipassana uh, Center basically uh, was an Indian that had, um, you know, originally by heritage, but was actually uh, living in Burma and had discovered this technique uh, originally just to be able to get rid of some headaches and because Burma was an isolated country, it actually... Um, retain this original form so um, yeah so if you haven't heard about the structure of Vipassana basically it's, it's a 10-day retreat um, there is no initial charge to um, to uh, attend this you do have to submit an application and they accept it and then you can pay by donation um, either through money or through time uh, and serve it back if you find value, whatever you find to be the appropriate amount and they're pretty low pressure on that. Um, and it's a pretty amazing thing to see that this sustains itself year after year um, because obviously certain people find value in it. And so uh, it's a 10 day retreat and basically you give up your cell phone um, in you know, the first day you're allowed to talk, you know, and then once you start the work, you're not allowed to talk except for maybe the teachers or if there's any sort of concerns with the place, you, you stay at the given retreat. You're up at 4 a.m. every morning and uh, usually at bed around nine and you're um, pretty much doing meditation throughout the whole day with some breaks. Um, you cannot do any forms of exercise other than brisk walking and uh, that means no yoga um, 
and they were fed about two two meals per day, vegetarian meals. So it's pretty intensive. So the idea is kind of to live like a monk, to have sort of a monk lifestyle for those 10 days. So in terms of the good things, uh, the food was amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing and delicious uh, vegetarian meals. I think even people who were not vegetarians said they really enjoyed the food. And um, everything was just incredibly organized in terms of the scheduling. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, the, you know, people were volunteering to cook for you. You know, just, I was just amazed on that aspect that people out of, out of the charity of their hearts uh, that were previous students of Vipassana had uh, found it, you know, valuable to provide back, right? And, um, you know, so that's really amazing just to see the whole organization uh, with that. And... Um, I definitely appreciated the purity of the teaching, even though I could have some challenges with it at times, um, because, you know, I have looked at those other forms of Buddhism, like, for instance, the Buddhism in Japan that would mix with Shintoism, or in China that mixed with Taoism, and, and um, you know, or even in Thailand that would mix with the animist traditions of spirits that... Um, you know, essentially, I think there's some benefit in that those traditions accepted Buddhism because they kind of found they were saying the same thing, right? Like if you look at, you know, Taoism and and Buddhism in China, it always was kind of combating with each other, but they were kind of talking about the same thing and they sort of mixed and matched, right? And so in a way, it's I think it's a different way of looking uh, at it. And, you know, I have a very sort of, practical viewpoint of Buddhism. To me, Buddhism is great because it's practical, it's it's very logical, and you can verify it in your life in terms of um, whatever you have in your life, whether it be, you know, money, whether it be, um, uh, you know, a good job, at some point that might come to an end and that will lead to suffering. So, um, you know, you ultimately have to find happiness within and being centered and, and being, um, grateful for the amazing mechanisms of life itself, which is, it's just an amazing thing to be alive. The fact that I have, you know, all these organs that are self-managed and I'm breathing like that in itself is an amazing thing, but often we get unhappy because we're focused on, you know, we didn't get that job promotion. Uh, we didn't, uh, you know, we can't afford for to buy that shiny new car and that's all about focus, but there's so many amazing things in front of us, within us, outside of us in existence that that we miss. So um, anyway, so I, I digress about that. In terms of purity of teaching, I, I think it was great that they do keep that sort of purity of teaching, which they try not to have. You do other forms of yoga or, um, you know, prayers or whatnot, just to really be able to isolate that when you start seeing the differences you can say it's for this technique not because you used a crystal and, and those things so I think that makes sense and um, you know there's certain things that over time I've actually seen that you know I've verified that to be true right so you know the they recommend about two hours of meditation a day which is pretty hard for most people to do I usually do about half hour to 45 minutes a day uh, which I've been doing for a number of years but I could see from my, you know, for myself adding some of the vipassana techniques um, that sometimes you need about, you know, even just within the 40 minutes, you just start to get warmed up, right? Particularly with some of the Sankara releases where you're releasing some of your past pains and memories and locked in your body. And I typically just did meditation, which was focusing on the breath, which was more like um, just improving my concentration and the ability to detach at a fundamental level. Um, so when I can, I try to even meditate longer. I, I do think that some of the things that they that they you know talk about to be to be true. Um, in terms of the cons, like um, it did feel a little bit too long at times for me, um, particularly just even in the beginning because I had been meditating for many, many years and some of it was, you know, you start off the first couple of days just 
doing just the breath meditation and um, focusing on your breath and you know I felt I had a pretty good level of concentration from meditating in that form alone before going into vipassana techniques so sometimes I kind of didn't feel like I was getting value out of it but you know there was the discipline of it of waking up at 4 a.m. and not talking and um, I guess was good but it just felt like that was sort of empty space. Maybe some people, if they haven't meditated before or not even familiar with any Buddhist philosophy, um, they would find it all valuable. But there was, yeah, even the lectures, which I really enjoyed at times, it was just repeating information that I'd already studied about Buddhism and whatnot. And, um, and there's times I couldn't really work with the technique because just even simple things like the you'd always have like the audio talking and um, you know and you're trying to work the technique and then listen at the same time things like that right um, someone asked me that went there as well would I do it again and the end of the day it's the proof is in the pudding right I mean I believe in Buddhism because Buddhism is very logical right and it's been a couple months now since I've done the Vipassana retreat and I'm starting to see some changes in me uh, with working with the techniques so you know definitely um, you know I wouldn't wasn't able to see that then and come to a sort of evaluation point like I needed to separate I mean this is you know Buddhism is an individual sport right and uh, so that was kind of a little bit difficult for me just to be able to sort of even have time to reflect and see you know are these things working for me or not um, yeah, so in a way that was a small con, but I think that's more of an individual thing, right? But, um, and I didn't really have any major epiphanies when I was there, like people go there, I guess they're expecting spiritual enlightenment and things like that, but I know it's not a one-off thing, this is, it's always about the daily practice and continue to practice and, um, and now I'm starting to see certain things. So um, the overall summary is that I think if you're someone who's into improving themselves, um, you won't lose from this perspective. Um, you have to keep an open mind. You have to sort of empty your cup to be able to uh, embrace a different uh, thing. And, and don't expect a vacation. This is not a vacation. It's not a getaway. I'm not going to lie. It felt like a prison at times. That prison's your own mind, right? Uh, and you need to work on yourself, right? But, um, you know, and it can also be a little bit time consuming because you have to take those, those you know, 10, 11 days off, um, which if you're working, that might be your vacation time. And again, it's not a vacation, right? But um, if you're someone that's really interested in improving, um, I would recommend the Pasna Center in Ontario. Uh, I had a really good experience. I was very impressed with how the organization was run, and um, yeah, overall, I think it's 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 a pretty um, you know pretty impressive uh, uh, organization, and, and to see the dedication of the people of, of giving back to you. So um, so yeah, if you go in there with the right mindset, with with your expectations of what it is, it's it's about improving yourself. Then I think you'll you'll do well with it and understand that it will be normal to have some normal uh, some mental breakdowns because uh, I'm pretty strong minded and I still had a few so anyways um, yeah check it out if you um, if you're thinking about doing so okay see ya